Sometimes the Old Testament stories and then the parables told by Jesus in the New Testament confuse and surprise his disciples as the stories end in the reversal of their expectations. For them and for us, these unexpected outcomes may take some time and effort to understand what they can teach us in the context of our own life journey. These readings today are very straightforward and they should get our attention. The first reading and the gospel often are think about as being uncomfortable and unsettling. They are challenging us. Are we Catholic Christians in word and in deed? Do we believe in what we say and do what we say? Are we engaged or are we indifferent to the suffering around us? In the first reading, the prophet Amos is directing his warnings to the rulers of the southern kingdom of Israel, also called Judea. He describes them as being complacent in Zion. Zion is another name for Jerusalem. The rich and powerful are living pampered lives. They pay no attention to the devastation happening in their own countrymen in the north of Jerusalem. They are ambivalent and unrepentant. They do not follow the scripture teachings. Their selfish behavior will eventually lead to their exile from their homeland. They will also be the first to lose their freedom and their independence to this Roman Empire. They become the poor, the suffering, and the outcasts. Their choices and their priorities play a large part in their own demise. And then the gospel reading takes us 500 years forward after the generation of Amos into the life and times of Jesus as recorded in the New Testament. We hear a similar parable theme that is described by Amos, demonstrating again that in this case, the rich man in the gospel cares only for his own wants and his excesses. And he chooses to ignore the plight of others like Lazarus. The description that we hear of Lazarus in the gospel is graphic and it is haunting. It reveals the painful and the horrible existence that Lazarus endures, giving or sometimes going unnoticed or ignored by those around him that have the resources to help him, like the rich man. Lazarus was subject to a miserable physical existence, and yet his soul was in the hands of the Lord. We all know the psalm, the Lord hears the cry of the poor, and the Lord expects us to have a preference for the poor among us, to help support the poor in our own life priorities and in the actions that we take. These two readings provide us all with the opportunity to examine our lives, to determine what is most important to us. The rich man was materially wealthy, but he was spiritually poor. He shows him indifference to the physical needs of Lazarus. He doesn't be mean to him, he simply ignores him. Interesting that the rich man is never named in the parable. Jesus places the responsibility and adherence to the commandments to all of us to keep the love of God and neighbor as ourselves as priorities and to share in that responsibility to make the world a better place, especially for those who have limited resources in materialism and in spirit, those that are mistreated, who feel unwanted, and unloved. The rich and powerful are not condemned for their wealth, but they refuse to share it, which is the problem. Not for their power are they chastised, but for their indifference and their inaction to help ease the suffering at their door and all around them. We know that we live in these polarizing times 
The wealth gap between those who have means and those who are desperate is growing, while the lack of resources for many force them to suffer in silence. Entire groups of our sisters and brothers are marginalized by their economics, by their race, by their gender. Our own community right here in Las Vegas realizes the polarization of wealth that exists and the prosperity that's there for some, and then the inequality and the injustice that is growing for the working poor, the homeless, the refugee. Here in Southern Nevada, across our country, and as we know, horrendous suffering that we see happening around the world. An example close to my heart. Catholic Charity serves a free daily meal which feeds hundreds of homeless and hungry children of God. Often it may be the only meal of the day for them. Our food pantry is now serving upwards of 125 families every day, and the number is growing. These are folks that have limited resources, and they are the working poor. The realities that we see of higher food costs and inflation may be irritating to all of us, but likely it does not impact our quality of life for those of us who are blessed with the God-given gifts of resources and choices and opportunity. Some of our local seniors must sometimes choose between food and medicine, between trying to pay their rent and utility bills while their Social Security stays the same. Right here in Southern Nevada, 2,500 seniors depend on Catholic charities for Meals on Wheels every day. Also, that is only one meal a day, and there remains 500 seniors on a waiting list for these critical resources. These programs are at risk for sustainability without the donations and the support from our community, along with more financial support that's desperately needed from our government. This grim reality must be unacceptable in a prosperous community like ours and in the richest nation in the world. I hope and believe that you will all feel that same way. And so I humbly thank you in this parish and Father Bill in this community for supporting the work of Catholic Charities and Meals on Wheels. And I implore all of us to engage and support our own ways to help the struggling in our community by making that a priority in your lives. Catholic Charities works hard every day to try to make a difference for the disenfranchised, one soul at a time, with dignity, compassion, and with help and with hope. We know that not any one person can do everything, but each of us can do something. We all struggle, we all hurt, we all need and desperately present God with our needs to his presence among us. This radical call in the gospel compels us to examine our conscience. Maybe we need to make some shifts in our lives to be sure that we include the needs of the suffering as part of our priorities. To paraphrase a quote from St. Ambrose, you are not making a gift of your possessions to the poor person. You are handing over and sharing with them what is theirs too, since everything we have is an unearned gift from God. We know that charity starts at home, and it starts with those that are closest to us. It also must grow beyond ourselves and our families, because you and I are being called to do our part to help God's wounded children in Christ and through Christ and with Christ. You and I can help to change the world one act of kindness and charity at a time.